So where I would always start with this um, is creating uh, quite a simple patch uh, within most likely Serum. Um, so just something like this, ju just to, just to uh, get the ball rolling. So let's load up Serum and start creating uh, this patch. Let's make sure that it's actually low enough. That could probably be going down again. So first and foremost, um, we want this to be sort of like a, a sub-driven um, baseline. But then we also want some areas that we can begin to modulate uh, with different effects and so on. And, and that's why we're going to uh, FM from B. So the way that you do that, it's, it's very, very simple. Put in two uh, sine waves next to each other, bring the level of oscillator B all the way down. And then within this section here, we're going to go FM from B. And this is going to be the bit that we modulate. Put that down an octave. It's a little bit clippy. But we, we can deal with that later. Now, I like to keep the, the initial patch as simple as possible and then make it more complex using effects later on. Um, one way to really achieve that is to use the, the same one or two LFOs or envelopes to control multiple parameters uh, within, the, um, within the synth itself. This helps to keep things nice and cohesive. It means that it's not annoyingly complicated for you then to go and change later. And it makes a sound actually sound, um, I just find, yeah, just, just more unified. So I'll probably use uh, one LFO to control things like the, uh, the filter. So let's put a low pass 24 on here. A high pass, sorry. And then I'll also do the same within the distortion. So put that guy in there. Now, obviously that's way too quick. Let's bring that down to maybe like two bars. And then just play around with this MIDI a little bit just to get something that is sort of taking advantage of this. Now, I know it's sounding kind of a, a bit clippy at the moment. Um, that, that's absolutely fine because we can go ahead and, uh, and change that a bit later on. So in terms of an actual bass patch, I would, I would actually be quite happy with this as it stands at the moment because, as I say, I, I like to make things more complicated and interesting outside of Serum uh, or, or outside of whatever the, the instrument is that you're using. So let's just say that this is what we like. What we're going to do from here is we're then going to... Um, most likely freeze this because I, I find that that just means that you can actually commit to the sounds that you're creating rather than always going back in and always tweaking. Um, but don't delete this, you know, we're, we're going to want this later. But this just helps us to actually push um, the, the, the song forward. Now from here, probably want to get rid of some of those kind of real low ends. I usually do things on about 35.5. And this is when we then want to start adding in uh, some more effects to, so that we can begin to modulate this. So first and foremost, uh, a bit of erosion to get. Then some saturation. Too much, but as you can hear, we're starting to give it a bit more of those nice uh, higher end frequencies. So, what we might want to do from here again is, and I, I always like to freeze and, and move things along um, because I, I like kind of having the, the sound progress and, and the sound uh, develop. And I always keep a, like a bin almost of like unused sound design at the top. Uh, so that I can, if I really have to, I can go back and begin to change things. Now, 
now from here, this is when I then want to start creating some of the mid bass elements. Um, and what I'll do is, I mean, I have a, I have a vocals chain here, but I, I do pretty much just use this for everything. Um, so we probably don't want any delay on this, but one of the things that we are going to want to do is cut out a lot of these uh, low frequencies. Give it a bit of saturation, a bit more saturation. Maybe give it a bit more sort of high end. And this is when I would uh, actually start arming um, a, an individual track to uh, begin changing uh, some of these effects. So what I'll do is I'll arm uh, a new audio track from. I think it's is this freeze tail yeah number three freeze tail um and then i would just i would literally just start recording uh, and starting to control uh, some of these uh, different parameters probably good if i armed it and then maybe So now what we're starting to get is little variations of the same uh, initial sample that we've used. And the reason that we do this is because when we then start to layer this back in with the original sample, they sound a lot more cohesive. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm going through this uh, sort of quite quickly, but if we get rid of some of these earlier ones because they're not as interesting as some of these later ones, Just keeping this initial patch as as like the sub patch almost, um, and then we're creating all of these more interesting elements that go over the top of it. Now, from here, what what I'll start to do is then start looking into uh, some other filters to add um, the audio effects rack um, within Ableton. So some of like the, the distortion elements that they've got uh, do sound really really good. So I'm just going to choose one at random just to see what it sounds like. And if let's just say that, that I actually quite like that one, what I'll do, and again, I, I do this literally all the time. doing is we're just then beginning to create kind of variations on variations of uh, the original sample and all of them are matching this initial this initial patch that we've created now this bit in the middle i know it sounded a bit bad when we um first did that but almost as like a a transition maybe between two eight bars, this could actually sound quite nice. So it was a bit, it was a bit loud. Let's actually just decrease that a little bit. I actually really like that. And probably what I would do from here 
is because this is like a, a sound that's bridging two together is I would go ahead and automate uh, uh, maybe a reverb. So we'd probably put it like here. That's quite high. And that would that would transition really nicely into sort of the next part of the song. Now again, what I would do from here is I would just re-record that. So that go that's going from six. Record this again. And you've got a really nice tail here. So that when we then start adding that in with some, some other elements that we've recorded, again, they just sound really cohesive together. No, that's got these other guys in it. Sorry about that. Now, something that I, I often do on um, sort of these longer tail reverby elements um, is I'll add either in uh, a, an auto pan um, or I'll modulate um, a kind of the gain on utility with uh, the, the LFO tool just to give it a bit more movement. So the way that, that kind of the difference, if you like, between these two, if we were to map this to the gain, obviously that's going a bit insane at the moment. Maybe put it on like two, one and a half bars. Just to kind of like make it pulse. I don't do that as often as just adding in an auto pan because I think the auto pan does sound really, um, really good actually. But with this, what I what I'd actually probably do is not have it on the initial. Um, I'd have it on more the tail. And probably even add in some more reverb uh, at this point as well, because reverb sounds great on basically everything. Put that afterwards. So I know kind of out, out of context, this, this may be a bit strange. So if I was just to put together um, quite a, a simple beat, um, I'll do this quickly now. Right. So we've got a, a little beat now, so we can actually sort of hear what this is going to sound like um, as a drum and bass track instead. So we started off with um, this sample here. And then we created these guys. And what we'll do is let's just try removing a couple of these just to see how they sound. And this is probably going to get a little bit loopy. Okay, and then we've got sort of this final sound in here as well.
See what it sounds like. Maybe we could have this as a bit of a riser. We'll probably have this guy as a riser as well. Um, Just because I, when I sort of when I'm fleshing out ideas, I do like to um, have it built in, kind of actually drop in. Good if I actually have the sample stand on. So yeah, as, as we've been going through, so I've just basically been through and, and created a, a quick beat uh, so that we can actually listen to what this sounds like in context. So it actually sounds a bit more like a, a drum and bass tune. So some of the things that, that I'd recommend um, is obviously kind of creating uh, variation with the, the samples that you're using. So kind of change the, the tails and the, the input. Uh, something else that I'd, I'd probably recommend is uh, creating some swells. Uh, this sounds, this is quite popular in uh, sort of like EDM and dubstep and that sort of thing. Um, we do need to crank that a bit though. Uh, and then just just create kind of like little, just really little variations of things. So maybe just like even duplicate, just little um, little changes like that. Really do just build up effectively. So let's see what it sounds like together. Um, so from here, again, some other things that I'd, I'd probably look to do, um, create some more chains, uh, just as we have before, um, arm that, and then using things like, uh, using effects like thermal, uh, thermal is, it really is amazing for, for this type of sound design, um, because it's, uh, honestly, a lot of the time it feels like cheating, if I'm, if I'm completely honest, because you can just load up some of these it doesn't even need to be the base preset. So I actually kind of steer away from these because I think they're a bit too sort of um, a bit too obvious. But if you go into maybe even like some of the uh, the low file, the feedback FX is really good. I'm just going to obviously I'm going to choose one. It's going to sound rubbish. But if we just choose this guy, for example, but there's some just even if you're not going to use that whole sound, there's some really interesting. You see, you see what I mean? So even even just tiny tiny little things like that. So 
So like this, this here is, is a perfect example of, of why we record these, because what we can then do is we can then go back and, uh, you know, try out some different thermal presets and, and create some of our own. But here, this we just kind of create our own little grunt, if you like. And, and this is where I then start adding in much, much the same as I did before with the reverb swell. I'd probably do that again. Uh, so the trick with this is kind of really, really big decay and then a really nice sort of, um, you usually just kind of like a beat, curve it in, then bring it back. Let's see how this sounds. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's sounding pretty cool actually. And then in the wider context. And then probably what I would do here is I would just take like, probably just this this tiny section here is like a um as its own sort of unique little um sample and then we probably want to sort of change up maybe the baseline here Let's see what we've got going on. And because we've got all of this as um, as audio, it just make I, I find it just makes my life so much easier to, to make these sort of small small edits uh, that I want to make. So if we just we're actually going to want that sort of whole effects rack. We'll duplicate that, delete this, and then this this bit here. In, like in my mind, I thought you know what, this would sound cool if the sound sort of like swelled a bit more. Um, so maybe if we were to go take kind of this hardest one here, and then maybe sort of this section here. I don't know if that's going to sound great, but I kind of thought like if it just sort of like changed up a little bit. Um, what are we looking at? There we go. And then we definitely, definitely want this sound again because that sounds really sweet. And then because we've layered a lot of these different sounds together and we sort of built a lot of these sounds from previous sounds, when we then start layering them on top of each other and, and sort of like cutting and changing um, the, the samples, um, they, they sound really cohesive. And, and that really comes down to the very first instance of the sound design that we created within Serum. Uh, so just using the, the same LFO to apply to a lot of different filters that is what, that is a way that I like to work and I kind of build out the complexity of sound because then it stacks, it just makes life so much easier. This guy, uh, where would that go? Would that go? No, I think I think that would go for that actually. Is that? No, not quite. No, that is in. That is in completely the wrong spot. Is that right? There we go. And then from here, I, this is when I probably then take this this sound specifically, um, and I'll go ahead and and put on probably an, another thermal uh, plugin um, under the. Um, 
Let's have a look. Maybe on the maybe let's have a look in some vocals and see what we can come up with. Yeah, that sounds quite nice. Bit too aggressive. Yeah, let's just give that a go. And what I'll do again is I'll just start recording this from now, 6.5 Audio 1. Oh, no, it's, I've created a MIDI. 6.5 Audio 1, there we go. Arm this, solo these guys together. What else have we got going on here? Probably get rid of some of that high cut. Right, see so how that sounds. And again, what what we're gonna all we're gonna do from here is we're gonna turn this guy off, and then we're just gonna start layering these with uh, with some other sounds. So let's put that here because we know that these sounds are kind of coming from one another. Uh, we might even want this as sort of a, a precursor to to that sound. Um, this one here. Let's where, where could that go? That could kind of like swell into this next bit. And if we put this onto a new track. And added in some reverb that uh, again we're going to sort of re uh, introduce through automation. But this time we're going to have it sort of running. Mm, probably don't want that running. Right, let's just see what we're working with here. And this guy here, I think he should probably go maybe like here. Mm, I don't really like that either, to be honest. Um, try to get rid of those. I mean, it sounds it sounds pretty good here. Maybe a little bit harsh actually. So we probably want to remove a couple of those elements out. Yeah, there we go. when I added, start adding in some other sounds. So just, just for the sake of, of this song, um, I'm gonna, yeah, just, just put in some, maybe just some vocals, um, see what shouts we've got. I don't even know what key we're in. I think we're in F minor, maybe. Or, no, we're in F sharp. Yo! Hey! Oh! <laughs> Shut up. Hey. Hey, hey.
Hey. Hey. Hey. Hey, 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 So this is um i've just started kind of like added in a couple of swells and, and vocals and stuff like that but uh we're, we're kind of at a place now where it's it's starting to sound um you know like it could be going somewhere um i'll probably carry on with this song just to sort of, sort of see how far i can take it um but yeah let's let's have a look at the final result Let's uh, have a listen to the final result. like a little sort of breakdown here. So, I mean, that from, from here, um, let's call it something that I won't remember. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll probably just start fleshing this out. Um, everybody, thank you for uh, watching this video. Hopefully you've learned some uh, interesting uh, tips and tricks. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments uh, if you've got any questions. Have, everyone have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Hey, that sugary one. Because uh, the file would be way too big to transfer across. I don't even know if this is going to be any good. I have a feeling that the video fucking cut out halfway through, to be honest. But I'll play you the, the, the examples.